With the addition of the new TS60, Festool now has four different plunge cut track saws that they offer to woodworkers. I am often asked my opinions on the different track saws as I have either owned or used all of them. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the differences between each one along with the similarities in an effort to help you make the right decision on which one is best for how you work in your shop. Now starting from your left to right, we have the TS 55 F. Now this replaced the previous TS 55 REQ. This is the newest model and it does come equipped with a thin kerf blade. Next we have the TSC 55 KEB and this is the same saw in terms of capacity. However, this is cordless. Also equipped with the 1.8 thin kerf blade. Next up, we have the new TS60. So this is gonna give you a little bit more capacity in terms of depth of cut than the previous TS55s do. And this also comes standard with the thin kerf blade. Then finally at the end, we have the largest of the four, and this is the TS75. Now this comes with a much larger blade. It has the highest cut capacity of all of the track saws, but this has the original 2.2 millimeter kerf blade. So of these four track saws, the only one that doesn't have the new thin kerf blades is the TS-75. There's one major difference between these two track saws, the TS-55F and the TS-75, and that is that both of these are equipped with a riving knife. So as you can see, we have a riving knife on the TS-55, we have the riving knife on the TS-75. So why is that different? Well, there's a couple of key differences between these two saws. One, this right here, since this has the new thin kerf blade that they're putting in uh, their track saws that are coming out now, it's a 1.8 millimeter kerf riving knife. The question I'm asked a lot is, can you use a standard kerf blade on this track saw? So say you have a bunch of the 2.2. The answer is yes, because this is 1.8. However, you can't do it the other way around. I could not use a 1.8 millimeter kerf blade when a, I have a 2.2 millimeter riving knife, if that makes sense. We talked about the riving knives, now let's talk about the differences between the other saws. This is the TS60, the newest saw, and if you guys wanna find out more really detailed information about this saw specifically, I will leave a link to a video I released recently on this, but this has what's called anti-kickback stop, and it is like that on both of these saws. And one thing that I wanna highlight is that these are not in line with the blade. Now the reason for that is because they are not riving knives. These are designed that if I was making a cut and the saw got pushed off of the track, when this comes out like this, in that scenario, the blade would be out, this would be riding against the fence, and when this pops off, it will immediately shut down the blade allowing it to not kick back, causing problems such as ripping up your track or cutting across, it's just a very dangerous situation. Well, this eliminates that with a kickback stop. Next, I wanna discuss an important consideration that a lot of people don't think about, and that has to do with the weight of the tool. So think about this and hear me out for a second. If I'm gonna be using this over and over and over again, I wanna make sure that I'm paying attention to how heavy the tool is. So what I've done here is I've lined them up from lightest to heaviest, being the lightest is the TS55F and the TS60. And technically, without the batteries, the TSC55 is the lightest, but you can't use it without batteries. So uh, I put that one just slightly above. And then the heaviest of all of them is the TS75. Next is cut capacity. So it's very, very simple to identify what the cut capacity is on Festool track saws. Why? Because the numbers associated with the title of the track saw is the cutting depth in most cases. So for instance, we have the TS55F and the TSC55. That means that we're gonna get a maximum at 90 degrees of 55 millimeters. Then we have the highest capacity being the TS75, meaning that I'm going to get a 90 degree cut at a max of 75 millimeters. Now the TS60 is just a little bit different in the sense that it actually goes to 62 millimeters and not just 60. But TS60 I think just sounds better than TS62. 
Every single one of these track saws is equipped with variable speed. And what I've done now is gone from lowest max RPM to highest max RPM. Starting with the TS-75 at 4,400, the TSC-55 at 5,200, the TS-55F at 5,800, and the new TS-60 at 6,800. Next, I wanna address power. So the TS-75 and the TS-55F both come equipped with plug it cord connections like most Festool products. Next, we have the TSC55, and as you can see, this is the cordless model, and it runs off two of Festool's batteries. However, it can actually run on one in a pinch. It just drops down the max power of the machine. Before moving on to the TS60, I wanna point out, this comes equipped with the EC Tech brushless motor. So this is a different motor than the 55 and the 75. Finally, the TS60, the newest addition, this is hardwired. This also has the new EC Tech brushless motor. So why is this wired versus the plug it cord system, which you know 98% of Festool tools operate off of? Well, that has to do with the power that's coming out of this machine. Now, in the other countries that this TS60 is available, it actually has a plug it cord. But here in America, it exceeds the power requirements for removable power. Therefore, it's a hardwired tool. I think I've covered a lot of the standard and common similarities and differences between the four different options that Festool offers. Now, because I'm asked so often on which one I think is right for most people, I want to close this video out by sharing my thoughts and opinions on this topic. I think a lot of people fall into the trap of it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And while that is true in a lot of instances, I think with a lot of power tools, that's not necessarily true all the time. And I'll give you a really good example of that. If you're only cutting material that's an inch and a half thick or less, you do not need a TS-75. If you're cutting two plus inch thick material all the time and maybe making waterfall tables or you need the ability to cut bevels in thicker material more often, a TS-55 or a TSC-55 is not the right tool for you. So it really boils down to what it is that you do normally. Uh, now I wanna share my thoughts and opinions on which ones I think are right for different people and I'm gonna share with you my favorite one and I'm gonna show you what I think the best bang for your buck among all four of these are. So to make this real simple, if you're somebody that doesn't care about the kickback stop technology and you want something that has a riving knife, you have two options. You have the 75, or the 55. If you don't care about a riving knife, then you have all four options. I think that the TS-75 is better suited for people that are cutting eight quarter thick material or bigger on a regular basis, uh, especially when they need the capacity to cut deeper bevels. If you don't ever do that, this is not one of those scenarios where just getting bigger is better. It's a heavier machine, it's not as enjoyable to use, and it's overkill for most applications if you're somebody that's mainly cutting sheet goods. The TS-55F I think is a fantastic saw. It has plenty of power, and that's a common misconception about Festool track saws, is people always talk about how Festool track saws have historically been underpowered. That is not the case. The case is, is that most times people aren't changing the blade to use it for the proper application. I would not use the standard fine finish crosscut blade that comes with a TS-55 to rip eight quarter walnut that's eight feet long. Of course it's not gonna cut it that well because the blade is not designed for that task. The next thing you have to ask yourself is do you want to stick with a plug it cord? And if the answer is yes, again, the only two options that you have are the TS-55F and the TS-75. Now I've saved my favorite two for last because that's the point of this video, is to tell you which one I think is my favorite and which one I think is the best bang for your buck all around that you can get. My favorite is the TSC-55 for a couple of reasons. One, I love the cordless option about it. I used to not always be a cordless guy, but I've really come to love the fact that the track saw is cordless. The next thing is the kickback stop feature. I like the kickback stop feature. It just gives me a little bit of extra peace of mind. 
And then finally, the biggest reason why I like this saw so much is because it has the brushless motor. And there is a significant difference using one of these versus using the TS-55F or the TS-75, not only from a usability perspective, but also a sound perspective, a overall operation perspective. It is substantially different from the previous saws. Now to tell you which one I think is the best the best bang for your buck. If you could only have one and you just wanted to get one track saw and have the most capabilities, it would be the TS-60, without a doubt. It's got an incredibly powerful motor. It has the newly redesigned kickback stop. It has a redesigned body. It gives you more cut depth, but it doesn't sacrifice the weight that the TS-75 does. So you have all of the great new features within Festival track saws in one saw that has more capacity than the previous models. And one more thing that separates this saw from the other three is that this will actually work on the FSK rails that are used for the HKC. Not a single one of the other track saws does that. So this gives you the most capability across the board over all of the other track saws. Hopefully you found this video helpful and hopefully it helps you decide which one of the Festival track saws is right for you. Thanks.